TV, Chris. Hey, what's up, Fam TV? <laughs> what's up, guys? How you doing? Glad to be here. Covered here in a dome. <laughs> <laughs> the Death Star is not complete yet. Not complete. Why is it when you guys are together, there's so much energy, so much action? Uh, what, me and Chris? I don't know. We like to have fun, and we like to, uh, I think we, we uh, mutually uh, try to tickle each other's ribs, so to speak, or he'll prank me or whatever. I'm terrible at pranking. He's really good at it. I, I think some of it's, like, we've known each other for 20-plus years. Yeah, yeah. We're like brothers. Like, we may be the brothers that annoy each other at Thanksgiving dinner sometimes. True. But we are, we love each other dearly. Actually, I we, know him more than you know. He never really annoys me. Um, we seriously, like, I... Both of us are still fully amazed at like where we've come from. Yeah. That we were just two dudes working in a crappy office in Fort Worth, and now we're just doing this, this. stuff. Yeah. And what blows my mind is that Chris and I often have very similar artistic uh, agreement, like when we're working on a scene together and where we're doing stuff. But in terms of our diet and what we can eat and what we have artistic <laughs> interest in, it's like we're opposites. Chris is like, hey, try this food. I'm like, this is terrible. He's like, my favorite dish. I'm like, try this. He's like, I hate this. Like, But we have very similar, art it's, I just think it's strange that we have very different backgrounds, but we have very similar artistic uh, appreciation, particularly for voiceover. You think he won't eat one of your Oreo cookies right now? Uh, he might. Wait, I gave him all the Zach. I actually yeah. gave my whole team the Zach. eating all the cookies. Oreo he ate all those Oreos, yeah. I have, okay. a, I have my own cookie handler uh, that, that, <laughs> yeah. that holds my cookies for me today. So yeah, we, we're out we're out of cookies for now. But I, I love the fact that some. What do you of, have in here? Oh, I have I have uh, money. Are you looking for? Uh, oh, no, I, you know what I have what in do you here? What call this? This is a Gu this is a Gucci uh, bag. Is that, that a satchel? It's, it's a, a Merce. It's a Merce. I mean, I, I like to keep my Leica. So if I want to look at something times eight, I wow. can I can see. Oh wow! I like to so like. Like a scope. Yeah, I got a Leica scope. I just I put it in there because sometimes when you're out in the world, you need to see something far away. That's so smart. Uh, yeah, it's just you know when I'm at a convention or whatever I need to see something far I, I, away. I carry like Hot Wheels. I yeah. Carry different stuff. I do. So I got distracted by I, yeah, the, 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 the yeah, yeah, robots yeah. over you, here. You guys are actually the one and two. Oh yeah, we are. We, we are. Sean, Sean's number two. <laughs> <laughs> Well, by the end These of this, guys are my childhood. I just want you guys to know, like, I love them so yeah, much. They, the, they're my childhood. That's and I'm very okay, good to, Thank good you. to have you here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Chris Sabat and Sean Shaw. <laughs> <Yeah. Okay. laughs> Thank you. Thank you. As you should. Hey, Thank I'll you. Take care of you later. Back to work. No, the we, validation came through. We paid them. We paid them. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, good. we did pay them. I got. I got to go. It's pay so them. cool to be able to work on the show. Um, working, like, I spent half of my career, and Sean spent half his career trying to explain to people what Dragon Ball even was. And then we work with guys like Zeno and Alex, and I go to try and explain something like, bro, we grew up on this show. I've seen every single Man, episode of it. Man, Zeno has a, a scene where he's screaming real loud, and I remember thinking, wait a second, is he kind of... Is he kind of doing something I do? And then I asked him, and he's like, "Yeah, I was totally influenced by your by what you're doing. I was absolutely channeling you in that in that scene, which was made me cry almost. Like that was really, that really, I was gonna get me right now, but uh, that really got me because to to think that you would inspire another generation, I think the reason it, it affects me so is I did a, a, a Lego episode once, Lego Scooby Doo, and I was in the booth with Frank Welker, who's my personal voice acting hero. Uh, and I was crying in the booth recording those sessions with him. So to hear uh, Zeno and, and Alex speak about Chris and I in this way is uh, particularly humbling and gratifying and, and, uh, and awe-inspiring, you know, as an artist yeah, especially. For sure. It really is. Chris almost shed a tear. Oh, he, he doesn't, this man doesn't cry often. I don't, yeah, I have and a heart does, of coal, of course. He, yeah, he has a heart of coal. No, he does not. He's one of the warmest guys you'll ever meet. Did Alex and uh, Zeno refer to you guys for any kind of advice to, well, for recording or, or voiceover VO? Um, I, I think I remember giving Zeno Zeno some advice in a, in, a, in a car at a convention once, and it was all like, I was mad one day, and I was like, ah, I was talking about all the negative things about voice acting. And then I yeah. saw him later, and I said, I shouldn't have said all that. I'm sorry. <laughs> there's a bunch of positives, too. I was just mad that day. So I don't want to be a bad mentor. But there are there's dark side to anything. No, um, it's, it's cool. Like It's cool to be able to introduce people yes. like Zeno into this universe, because he's already so talented. Now, he's so. stupidly talented. It's just ridiculous. Like I'm like, this guy's going to give me a run for my money. So I'm super impressed with him. We'll be destroying him later. Yes. Welcome to Fab TV. Look at Hollywood's latest. See all the red carpets. Yeah, you know me, it's all free.